Man, we're so glad that you're here at Love Church today. Why don't you welcome and high five three to five people as you take a seat this morning. Happy Memorial Day weekend. My name is Pastor Mike O'Connell and uh, just so glad to be with you guys today. I have the privilege of serving as associate lead pastor here. And I do, anytime I get on the platform to preach in this pulpit, I wanna honor Pastor Todd and Denise who started the church 16 years ago. Can we give it up for our leaders? Come on, we're so grateful and thankful for you. They always point to Jesus and God has been so faithful in their lives, but don't you love that that God is just looking for willing vessels that say yes, and we just honor your faithfulness and stewardship over the years. And uh, we just wanna take this moment, man, if you're with us for the very first time, come on, let's put our hands together again for those that are joining us. We're so thankful. We're so thankful that you're in the room today. And uh, really, man, it just means the world that you would come and visit us today. And just make yourself comfortable. We're believing that God's gonna speak to you today. Also, people all over the world joining us. Uh, man, we just honor you. We're so thankful and grateful for what God is doing online. It's just, it's absolutely incredible uh, what God is doing online. Um, I do wanna mention this because right now there's so many new people coming to the church and all sorts of people showing up. And sometimes you're, if you're new to a church, you know, you're like, this is awesome, but how do, I, how do I get engaged? How do I get connected? How, I, how do I take a next step? Like, what does that look like? We've really tried to simplify that as a church. And uh, we started a four week process called Essentials. And uh, it's beautiful. It, it'll help you connect with the heart of Love Church and God's purpose for your life and how you can engage here. And so that'll be actually step one is kicking off again next weekend. So. We just wanna invite you, if that's you, you're in the room, you're like, yeah, I wanna get engaged, I wanna learn a little bit more. This is for you, this is your next step. So engage uh, in, in on that. Also, I didn't do this in the first encounter, um, but our executive pastor, Pastor Adam and his wife, Abby, just had their first uh, baby, Ari. If you're tuning in, we just wanna say congratulations. Uh, they're not with us in the room today, but man, uh, we just celebrate. Any, we, know, we believe this, that children are a gift from the Lord. And uh, I just know we're so thankful for Pastor Adam's leadership in this season. And um, he's not necessarily up here preaching, but I'm telling you, he's uh, making a difference behind the scenes. And so we just, we just honor uh, your family. We celebrate alongside you guys in this special time. Uh, we're gonna be in the book of Mark today. Uh, this is going to be the last uh, message that we give from the book of Mark as we're closing out uh, the book of Mark. Have you guys enjoyed Mark, the gospel of Mark? You guys heard the game plan earlier. We are a simple church. This year, uh, we're teaching from the four gospels in the book of Acts. And uh, so we've journeyed through the book of Matthew. We're almost through the book of Mark. And uh, man, Mark, I love Mark. John Mark is the writer of this particular gospel. And scholars submit that he's the interpreter for Peter. Peter liked to talk, so I can just picture John Mark just getting his notepad out, writing down all that Peter was talking about. And uh, the cool thing about John Mark is he was the first cousin of Barnabas. Barnabas rolled with uh, the Apostle Paul and went on uh, the first missionary tour with those guys. And so John Mark, man, just a, a, an incredible a man of God. And there's so much for us to learn from this particular book. And what I love about this book is um, it's a little bit different than the other gospels. It focuses less on what Jesus said and more on what Jesus did. Come on, don't you love people that don't just talk a good game, but they walk a good game? And uh, I don't know, but I like the book of Mark because it's simple and it gets to the point. And uh, even in today's uh, message, we're gonna look at a, at a text that you can find in other gospels, but Mark just jumps right to it. It's pretty straightforward. So. We're gonna go right to the text today, Mark chapter 16. A little bit of context here of where we're at in the book of Mark. For those of you that haven't been with us, last week, Pastor Todd uh, taught a message on pressure and specifically looked at the text when Jesus is praying in the garden of Gethsemane before he's gonna to go, to, go to the cross on our behalf. And so that was our last message here on a Sunday. And so Jesus goes to the cross, he pays, the penalty for the sin of all mankind. They put him in the grave three days later, he cracks that grave. He raises from that grave. 
And in Mark chapter 16, we see that the first person that Jesus encounters after raising uh, from the grave is Mary Magdalene. This was a woman that was, man, she was set free, free. And uh, so Jesus tells her to go tell the people they don't believe. So then he runs into a couple more disciples and says, go and tell the people and they don't believe. And so let's pick it up here in 14. Jesus is rolling up on the set to the disciples and it says this. Still later, he appeared to the 11 disciples as they were eating together. He rebuked them for their stubborn unbelief. Any, any stubborn folks in the house of God today? Come on. He rebuked them because they refused to believe those who had seen him after he had been raised from the dead. Now, this is, this is actually good news for all of us in here that are stubborn, that experience unbelief, that don't have it all figured out. There's something that we can learn here from these disciples because somewhere along the way, we've believed the lie that we've got to be perfect and have it all together in order for God to use us. But in the very next line to these same people that he just rebuked, he's saying this, then he tells them, all right, I know I just rebuked you, but you're going to go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. These knuckleheads just got the baton from Jesus. Verse 16, anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved, but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name and they will speak in new languages. They will be able to handle snakes with safety and if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. When the Lord Jesus had finished talking with them, he was taken up into heaven and sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. That's where he is today. And the disciples went everywhere and preached and the Lord worked through them, confirming what they said by many miraculous signs. And the next few moments, I wanna speak to you about this subject. If you're writing notes, you can write down today's title and it's this, inviting a skeptical world to follow Jesus. The subtitle is Reaching the Last, the Least, and the Lost. Let's pray. God, thank you for your word. We just thank you that, man, I know that I was personally challenged by this commission. Many of us in here, we know it. It's not, it's not a result of what we don't know, but it's very different moving from knowing it to doing it, to practicing it, to living the sent life, to being on mission wherever we go. And I pray today for all of us, that you would remind us that church is not a place we go, that we are the church and we actually go into the world to make a difference. Would you do it in our hearts today? In Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. Anybody just enjoying this weather lately? Come on. It's so good. I love when the sun is shining and um, the springtime's just fun on so many levels, but uh, one of the things that's fun this time of year is it's wedding season. Hello. Uh, anybody enjoy wedding season? Anybody like wedding season? As a matter of fact, anybody been to a wedding already this year? Anybody planning on going to a wedding this season? Put your hands in the air. Okay, so over three quarters of the room uh, going to the wedding. Some of you are like, stop talking about weddings. I've been waiting on my spouse and they just are not showing up. Is this going to be a message on relationships today? I'm going to get up and walk up out of here. Hey, before your stubborn little self leaves, <laughs> let me just tell you, we're gonna, this is gonna be really good. Wedding season, wedding season. As a matter of fact, in the first encounter, there was this beautiful couple uh, sitting right over here in this section, the Andrews family. Today, they were celebrating 53 years of marriage. Wow. Didn't you love what Deb yelled out? She says, it hasn't been easy. I said, amen, sister. I'm celebrating a decade in August, and it's not easy, but it's worth it. Yes. It's worth it. Is anybody with me in here? It's worth it. And uh, since we're talking about weddings, I, I want to ask you some questions. Can I do that? Are you with me today? Um, so do you enjoy like an intimate wedding? Do you enjoy that? Anybody in here? Show of hands. You like, you like the intimate way? Who in here likes the, you just like the, the basher, the big, like four or 500 people. You like you like that kind of wedding. Wait, raise your hands in the, high in the air. Okay, we're gonna pray for all y'all. Y'all just, I mean, we, 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 
We know, okay, we're going to pray for all you. Those are the people that like to just send it, have a good time. How about this, uh, DJ or live music? Oh, okay, live music. I hear a lot of live music right here in the front, but I hear some DJ in the room, in the room. I uh, recently was uh, sitting in my pajamas, eating a chocolate bar, just scrolling on Instagram. And uh, gosh, I just always, I always expose myself that I've got a sweet tooth. You know it's bad when some ladies roll up to you on a golf cart at the 180 golf outing with some German chocolate cake, and they're like, hey, OC, I know you got a sweet tooth. Like, geez, OP, I need to stop exposing myself. So um, anyways, eating a chocolate bar in my pajamas on the couch after putting the kids to bed, and I'm scrolling on Instagram, and I love, I love Instagram. Um, it's kind of fun because you... Uh, you can kind of see what's happening and it kind of, you feel like you're connected to what's happening, but you're not really connected to what's happening. It's like, it's, it's like the ultimate escapism kind of. And this one particular time I jumped to a story and I realized one of my homies was dressed in a tux, standing next to a woman in a white dress. And I'm thinking, what, it, 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 is he, did he get married? Am I just finding out about this? Like, I didn't get invited? What? I'm in pajamas eating a chocolate bar. My man is getting married. Now, just confession. Let me just be honest in here. There are some weddings that I don't get invited to, and it's all good. I'm like, hallelujah, I didn't have to get dressed up and go sweat in that 90-degree weather. Is anybody with me in here today? Okay, we can be honest in church. But this particular one, I was like, oh, that kind of stings, man. That's, that's my homie. I mean, it's, that's a tough way to find out. And, you know, so all, those, all, those, all the different kinds of thoughts are going through your mind. Like, did I forget his birthday? Did I say something wrong? Hey, Jay, did you see an invitation come in the mail and you didn't give it to me? Like, what happened? You know, you're thinking all these different things and, yeah, and all these different thoughts are going through your mind. And then you're, the, the interesting thing about, the, about Instagram and, and seeing it all is, is you know, it's like the ultimate FOMO experience, right? You know, like you, you can see who was invited because they're like, you know, showing the whole deal. You know, it's like, oh, there's my, there's my, okay, he was there and he was there and he was there. And then I saw a post with their dog and I'm like, your dog, you brought your dog and you didn't invite me? Jeez, tough world out here, isn't it? It stinks when you don't get invited to the things that you want to be invited to, right? I was talking to another friend who, experienced something similar, and uh, he was sharing with me how um, he didn't get invited to this particular wedding, but he took the high road, and he sent a gift, like a really nice blender gift, and I think that's just great, and uh, we were laughing and joking because he was sharing that uh, the, the couple that didn't invite him to their wedding, but received a gift from him posted this nice blender with a caption that said, thank you to everybody who came out and supported us. <laughs> He's thinking like, what in the world is this? Oh, isn't it funny? But this is what's interesting. We all experience the power of an invite when we aren't invited. Isn't it true? See, when you're not invited, it reveals the power of an invite. T today, we're, we're talking all about how to invite a skeptical world to follow Jesus. And I don't know about you, but if, if I'm not careful, my Christianity experience can become casual. I can start becoming apathetic. I can start being more of a consumer than a contributor. I can start making this thing more about what I can get than what I can give what I can receive rather than how I can serve. No, the church doesn't exist for us. We're the church and we exist for the world. We've been called to live life on mission. Somebody say mission. See, I think we've misconstrued it at times. I love gatherings like this. As a matter of fact, it's biblical. It's why we do what we do. It, you know, the, I picture this. This is a lot like a locker room. Now, I'm sorry and I apologize, but it's true. We got an, you guys are probably sick of the football illustrations and all of that. I didn't choose this. God said, go be a pastor. I didn't go to school for this. God said, be a pastor. I'm sorry that that's our background, but I picture this like a locker room. You've heard him say a holy huddle. I like that. A holy huddle, but guess what? 
to go win the game, you got to break the huddle and go execute the play. Like if this is what it's all about, we're going to get a lot of delay of games and we're going to be going the wrong direction. We've got ground to take in our city. Wake your neighbor up right now and tell him we've got ground to take. We've got ground to take. I think about, I think about this stat that says that over 50% of people that are following Jesus are following Jesus because they were first invited. I mean, think about it. Raise your hand in here if you, if you are following Jesus or in this church because somebody invited you. Just put your hand in the air. I, I think about my own story of being invited. You know, because some of you are thinking, how did they put a microphone in this dude's hands? I don't know. I just said, I just told you I don't know. But they're going to throw up a slide behind me. And I want you to see this because I, I want us to understand the power of an invite. I want you to see this. Is it up there yet? I'm not going to look. I, I need the slide with the faces on it right now. Okay. Can you see the faces? Okay. I need you to see this and I need you to get this in your spirit today because you need to understand that God works through an invite. The first guy on the screen in the very top left corner, and I'm not looking at it, Mr. Wallace, Joe Wallace, coached me in football and was one of my high school teachers. Now, many of you know my story. Uh, on signing day 2006, I decided to walk on at the University of Iowa. Two weeks later, I was notified by the admissions department that I didn't get into school. You guys know what I'm talking about. When I talk about not getting an invite, this was the invite that I was dreaming of for my whole life. I wanted to go be a Hawkeye, and it didn't work out. But I'm so thankful for Joe Wallace, who cared about me enough to say, you know what? I'm going to make a phone call to a guy named Zach Butler. You see the arrow going to him? Zach Butler. Zach Butler played football at Iowa State, was from Iowa City, where I was from, and was selling medical devices for Stryker after a short stint in the NFL. He called Zach and said, hey, Zach, this crazy thing happened to Mike O'Connell. I would love for you to drive to Regina and just give him a talk. Would you just encourage him? So Zach, at the time, is living in Minneapolis, Minnesota, happened to be back in the area, and he comes and he meets with me after school, tells me his story of going to Iowa State, how much he loved Dan McCarney. And so after that meeting, I'm saying, man, I want to go be a cyclone. He calls Dan McCarney. You see the next arrow. Dan McCarney was the head coach at Iowa State. Dan McCarney took the call in Hawaii. He answers the phone in Hawaii and says, oh, yeah, I remember Mike O'Connell. We would love to have him. So I go there in 2006 as a walk on. You guys know the story. I'm not going get to get into it right now. But that first season of playing college football was one of the most difficult, dark seasons of my entire life. I was in a really rough spot. So I'm standing out at practice one day and I feel a tap on the shoulder, which is the next guy on the screen. His name is Dave Ray. David Ray was a senior defensive back that tapped me on the shoulder and he said, hey, I go to this Bible study on Wednesday nights at our team orthopedic surgeon's house. His name is Tom Greenwald. That's the next arrow. He says, why don't you come with me? I said, you know what? I mean, I was kind of exposed to faith a little bit growing up and so I'll come with you. I'll show up. He's like, they got bomb dessert. Roll through. I'm like, okay. <laughs> You just said bomb dessert to a sweet tooth. I will be there. What time? He said seven. I said, I'll be there at 645, my guy. So I show up and, and there's Tom Greenwald. And Tom Greenwald was an orthopedic surgeon at Iowa State. And he's been doing it for years. I'm talking over 30 years. He, he was there when Pastor Todd was there in the 90s hosting the same Bible study. Do you understand that 12 years after he walked through those doors, I walked through those same doors? Now, there's a picture that's not on here. I use this picture in corporate talks that I give. There's another face I would love to put up here. His name is Curtis Taylor. What you need to know about Curtis Taylor is I met him at this Bible study at Doc Greenwald's. He was three years older than me, and guess what happened? He led me to Christ in a Hollywood video parking lot in 2007, one year after David Ray invited me to the Bible study. Okay, so I finished my career at Iowa State. Doc uh, 
gives me a call. He says, hey, I wanna take you and some of the guys that are graduating down to my condo in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Do you think they would be down? I said, do you think they'd be down? You just tell us when and we'll be there. So me and five homies go down to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico with Tom Greenwald and he calls up Pastor Todd and says, hey, I'm taking these guys down to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico and we're gonna work through the book of First and Second Timothy. Do you wanna roll with and help me teach these young guys? The story goes, he says, hey doc, let me pray about it. Okay, I'm in. He prayed really quick, <laughs> really quick. He was a pastor at the time, so he hears from God like direct line. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, I will be there. I'm there in the sand, sunny. So this is crazy because we were just with Doc at that same place that he and I met in May of 2011. I meet Pastor Todd in May of 2011, and at the time, I'm pursuing pro football. Fast forward four months later, I get a workout for the Miami Dolphins, don't get signed. My agent calls and says, hey, there's an opportunity to play in the UFL in Omaha, Nebraska. So four months after meeting Pastor Todd in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, God is bringing me where? Right here to Omaha, Nebraska. Now, a couple of weeks ago, or maybe I should say like maybe six weeks ago, Dave Ray, the guy who invited me to Doc's Bible study, reached out I hadn't talked to him since I left Iowa State. He said, hey, I'd love to get on a call with you just to reconnect. So I get on a little Zoom call with him about six weeks ago, and I start sharing with him the story. And he's sitting across on this Zoom call just weeping. Okay, I didn't share this in the first encounter. And I know right now that we're not in the Bible, but I came in here to declare today that there is power in your invitation. The question is, who are you in proximity with that needs a tap on the shoulder just like David Ray tapped my shoulder at practice? He didn't preach the gospel. He didn't pray for me. He didn't really do anything spiritual. He just said, will you come with me? I want to take you on the journey. See, I think oftentimes as Christians, we're trying to close the deal. And you know what? Here's what I'll tell you. I love how Pastor Jim challenges in this. Every situation is different. You it just, you got to allow the spirit to apply the right strategy. Here's what we know. It takes people seven times hearing the gospel before they say yes. So depending on where you're at and the part that you're playing will probably determine what God wants you to do in that moment. There's often times where it's, you're crossing them over the line of faith and it's time to close the deal and help them take that, take that step of faith. But oftentimes you're just sowing a seed. You're building a relationship. You're taking them on a journey. You're inviting them into your home for dinner. You're blessing them. You're living a generous life. You're being will, willing to stand in the marketplace, in the community, at the sport games with confidence, knowing who you are and what God has called you to. Is anybody thankful and grateful for that? This is what he's invited us into. And sorry, I started thinking about this. And here's the question that I asked myself this week. I started asking myself this question. When was the last time that you invited someone to take a step towards Jesus? Not just inviting them, but actually walking with them, going the journey with them. Go and make disciples is what Jesus is challenging you and I in. The question I think we need to ask this morning is what are we waiting for? Because there is a God that's willing and ready to save everyone. He's willing and ready to save everyone. But I believe this, that there are a lot of reasons that we don't invite people to follow Jesus. And today, I wanna give you six lies the enemy gets you and I to believe that stop us from inviting others into the abundant life of following Jesus. Do you want the lies? Here they are. Number one, I don't have all the answers. Anybody ever made that excuse in here? Hey, if you're waiting to have all the answers, you're gonna be old, gray, and crusty, trust me. <laughs> Number two is this, I'm still a work in progress. Oh, join the club. I mean, there are so many weeks I'm coming up here and I'm like, God, I think you called the wrong person. But if I was waiting until I felt prepared and ready, man, my goodness, I would never do it. God's just looking for willing vessels, humble people that'll say, you know what, I don't have it all figured out. 
but I know the one that lives in me does. And he's filled me afresh and anew and his power flows through me. And if he says go, I'm going to go because I know he'll do the work through me. The third one is this. I'm not an evangelist. That's Pastor Jim's job. He's the evangelist. True. We're not all evangelists, but we're all called to be evangelistic. Did you catch that? We're not all evangelists, but we're called to be evangelistic. Number four is this. It's the preacher's job. I thought that's your job. You're going to go do it. Well, here's the problem with that mindset. I don't work where you work. I don't work out where you work out. I don't live in the neighborhood that you live in. And I, and I'm not showing up to the ball diamonds that you're showing up to. We've got to go where God is calling us to go. The fifth one is this. Oh, have we ever heard people say this? My faith is private. It's private. It's private. And here's the sixth one. I asked Cap this question yesterday. I said, is there anything else that I should add to this list? And he said this one, and I think, it, I think it is powerful. He said this, that I don't believe God is a rewarder. And he shared from his own perspective that like for him, even over the last year, as God has continued to use him and expand his influence online for the gospel, before he said yes to that and stepping into it fully, he, he was believing the lie that God wasn't a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And here's the deal. Sometimes you, you can even hear that and you're like, well, is that the right motivation? Well, here's the deal. We know that we're storing up treasure in heaven. Like, so I think that that can be a good motivation to drive us to, to, to live this life on mission. Here's what we know that the word tells us. It says this, that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are what? They're few. And, and I pray that, that that wouldn't be true of our church. That, that our self-feeding vision wouldn't fill us with so much knowledge that we get puffed up, but that we get built up for the work that he wants to call us to. That it would just humble us and cause us to say, man, I'm learning who I am, who God is, and what he cares about. I better go share that with some people. We know this, that as the times get darker, the light's just gonna shine brighter. The Bible says that the darkness will never extinguish the light. I believe that God is calling a church to rise up, to stand up, to get bold, to start stepping like we're standing for something. Is anybody with me today? I think that's the question that he's asking you and I today. Are we just going to continue to be casual Christians? Or are we going to get in on the mission? Because I think some of us, we've misconstrued the call. We think that, man, God's called me to show up to church 1.6 times a month with a skinny latte in hands. I'll keep my hands in my pocket. And when I walk out these doors, I'm not thinking about Jesus until I come back in a month. No, Jesus is calling you and I. The goal is this, to do what he did and to say what he said. He, he's calling us to not just talk the talk, but walk the walk. He's calling us to live life on mission to go into the spaces and places that he's called you and I to go into and to make a difference. Is anybody with me today? This is what he's called you and I to do. So what does that look like? It means, hey, moms and dads, go raise up little disciples in your home, CEOs and presidents in the room. It looks like standing on God's principles as you lead your, your uh, company. It, it looks like coaches in the room. Man, we need some godly coaches in youth sports today. Is anybody with me? Can I get an amen in the room? And so this is what it looks like to live on mission. It's, it's, it's not some lofty spiritual thing. It's saying, God, where are you taking me? And how can I stand for you a little bit more boldly? I got a great picture of this recently. And um, I, love, I love this time of year. Don't you love su raising young kids in the summertime is amazing. It's just, we live by the chat fields. And so the kids are just... They're, they're in the little kiddie pools and they're doing the water stuff and they're just, I mean, hours outdoors. Do you remember those days? What it was like being a kid, just shirt off, no shoes on, just running around, just being a kid, just sending it, eating popsicles and all the things. And uh, a couple weeks ago, we were shooting hoops in the driveway and all of a sudden you start hearing this music and I'm like, oh, that's, that's an ice cream truck or a Kona ice truck. No. In the name of Jesus, get into another neighborhood. And um, I love that that's funny to you guys now. 
me talking about all the sweets and stuff. So of course, the, now I got to say this, what a strategy by Kona Ice. I, I was saying in the first in, encounter, we need to find some investors and we need, to, we need to invest in Kona. I talk about being a missionary. I love it. They're not getting the brick and mortar saying, come to us. They're like, no, we're going to deck out this van, play music and drive through neighborhoods. We're coming to you. And here's the deal. They are who they are. Whether you're annoyed by them or not, it's kind of funny because we live around some, uh, you know, a couple of houses where there's some older folks. And, and it was so funny because they were, their music was pretty loud. And, uh, the, you know, after a while, this old lady comes out of her house, like thinking that somebody was blasting their music and she realizes it was the Kona Ice truck. But don't you love it? Kona Ice is coming in the neighborhood saying, this is just who we are. I mean, you can't miss it. You ever seen one of those trucks? I'm like, I, what did you invest into this thing? That is amazing. I mean, the music is blaring and they just had this whole thing going on. And I love it. It was this sweet couple in their 60s. What a retirement plan, by the way. I mean, are you kidding me? They're just going around. They probably just so much joy because they get to serve all these kids. And uh, can you just picture it with me? Now, here's the thing. It would be a bad strategy for Kona Ice to put all of their stuff that makes the snow cones in a Honda CRV and start driving through the neighborhood with the windows rolled up. You know what I mean? Like, what kind of strategy would that be? You're not going to sell any Kona ice doing that th type of thing. But I have a feeling that that's what we've done as Christians. In an attempt to build bridges, we've just started to fit in with culture rather than stand out. I believe Kona ice is a great picture for you and I. Listen, the kids, oh, dad, oh, Kona Ice is here. Let's go do it. And you can just see all the parents are like, all right, Kona Ice, get another strategy. Go to another neighborhood. You're going to run me dry this summer. My goodness. And isn't that such a great picture? See, here's the deal. God is calling you and I to take a stand, to be willing to stand out. We need to get off the fence and we need to say, man, this is who I am in Christ. And I'm not going to be arrogant about it. I'm not going to be judgmental towards you about it, but I am going to be humble and I'm going to be God for it. And I'm going to be who God's created me, me to be. And I'm going to stand on the values that he's called me to stand on. And I'm going to do it just like Romans 1 16 says, I'm going to be unashamed and unapologetic in taking a stand for Jesus. And guess what? There's going to be a lot of people that run to you just like the kids run to the Kona ice truck. Why? Because you're the aroma of life to those that God is drawing. But you better believe that there are going to be some people just like us crusty parents like Kona ice, get out of here. As you take a stand, there are going to be some people, the Bible says that you're going to be the aroma of death to them. Why? Because they're on the path towards destruction and you stand in opposition of what they're standing for. And so I think that this morning we just need to, there's three questions. I, I didn't even get to them today, but I believe I'm going to, I'm going to give them to you. There's three questions you need to ask today as it relates to this text, because Jesus said this, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. And I think there's three questions that you and I should be asking, like, what does this look like? And here's the three questions. Where am I going? Like, this is the proximity question, because here's the deal. You're in proximity to people every single day. Like God is taking you every single week and every single day to a lot of the same places around a lot of the same people. You know their struggles. You know their successes. You know their names. You know their stories. You know what's going on in their families. The question is, can we just get a little bit more intentional with the people that God has already placed around us? Here's what I've learned is that oftentimes that, that God is going before us. He's, he's already setting things up. It's like, it's like I picture the dad that's setting the tee ball on the tee. It's like the picture I get is, is God every single day. He's really doing this if we'll just be aware. Because here's what I've learned. Heaven doesn't sync its schedule up with your iCal. So guess what? When a divine appointment happens, You've just got to be ready for it. You've got to respond to it. 
You've got to say, yes, Lord, my goodness, look at this. And you know how it oftentimes happens? It happens when you stop getting self-consumed and you get others consumed. You're focused more on being a, a better listener, somebody that's more focused on being interested than interesting. This is going to cause you to kill your ego, to get low, to do what Jesus did, to wash feet, to see people the way he sees them. I think about um, a couple weeks ago, I was uh, driving. I was reminded of this principle while I was driving. You know, you love the roads in Omaha right now. I'll just pray for all the tires in the room. Lord, you are Jehovah Jireh. <laughs> Pour out provision for broken tires. And uh, I was driving down 180th Street and there was, you know, a large bump in the road and I had to kind of slam on my brakes. And as soon as I slammed on my brakes and went over it, it sounded like my tire popped. And I'm like, oh no, I'm like on my way to record this podcast with this company. And I'm like, oh no, I just really hope this didn't happen. So I'm like, do I keep driving? and just, you know, just hope that that thing's not popped? Or do I pull off because I'm on 180th Street at the 180 Ministry House and check this thing? And I felt like the Spirit was like, just pull off, just pull off, check it. It's gonna take two minutes, but listen, if you got a pop tire, it's better that you're stalled in the 180 parking lot than on the side of the road on 180th, stopping all the traffic. Anybody with me in here today? So I pull off and I pull into 180 and all the dudes are sitting out in front. They're sitting in the chairs, Sam's out there. So I kind of pull up under the underhang. I'm like, what's up guys, man? I missed you today at, at, at the Bible study. And what are you guys doing out here? And they're like, yeah, we're, we're memorizing this verse, second Timothy 1, 7. Sam's like, you, you know that verse? I'm like, yeah, I think I know. That's, that's the verse that says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and self-discipline, right? And he's like, yeah, that's the verse. And he's like, what's that mean to you? And I start sharing what it means to me. And I start talking about how we, we, we helped our kids memorize that verse. And then I shared a story about this time where Judah encouraged one of his friends who was experiencing some fear. Judah looked at him and said, God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a, and a sound mind. And he's given you self-discipline. And, 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 I, and I started to think about how, you know, this verse has been so helpful because I'm experiencing freedom in certain areas of my life because I didn't give in to fear. So I'm like having a mini sermon session here. I'm like, you just asked a preacher if I know this verse, like, oh, and I'm like all fired up. And I, you know what, I, you know what I love about the 180 guys, man? It's like, I can talk like a coach. I can talk like I'm in the locker room and I'm like all jacked up and stoked. And I'm like, all right, I got to get to this podcast. And, and these guys like get up out of their chair and they're like, yeah, like, yeah, we're not going to give into a spirit of fear. And they're like, just as jacked as I'm jacked. And I get in the car and I'm, and I'm getting in my car and I'm going to drive to this podcast. And that's when, and that's when I got the revelation that heaven's schedule isn't synced with yours. And I think about like, if I wouldn't have pulled off, there wouldn't have been a moment to exhort and encourage these young men to just speak life into them. And I thought to myself, how many times do I miss moments like that? Because you better believe for every one that I get, there's probably five that I just miss because I'm in my own head. I'm in my own world. I'm caring about myself. Have you been there? The question is, where's God taking you? Where, where are you going? Who are you in proximity with? And the second question this is this, what are you doing in that place? What are you doing? What are you, this is the demonstration question. And I love this verse of scripture because we see it in Mark 16, 17 through 18. It's Jesus says that there are certain miraculous signs that will come to those that believe. And I'm not going to go through those here, but To me, this is the demonstration of a decision, of being on God's team. This is going to be the, the demonstration that comes from our, our, our lives. This is, this is what it looks like to, to, to bring the good news, to bring the kingdom, to pull heaven to earth. And 1 Peter 2.12 says this, and I love this. It says, live such good lives among the pagans that Though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Now check this out. The Greek word translated good is kalos, which can mean beautiful, lovely, or shapely. So here's the question I want to ask us today. Are you and I living in such a beautiful and compelling way that it causes the people around us to ask questions? See, I think, again, in our attempt to build bridges and fit in, we're not standing out. 
We're not living curious enough for people to even ask like, hey, why do you do that? Why do you take your wife out on dates? Why do you open the door for her? Man, when I noticed that you're, you're so intentional to read the Orange Bible with your family at night. Like, what's that all about? Or you invited us over for dinner, and man, you didn't just pray over the food. Like, you, you like, man, are you like a, do you, are you a professional, like, prayer? Like, what's the deal? Help me understand. Like, what's, what's, you know, like, you don't, hey, PT, I noticed you don't, you don't cuss, man. Like, help me understand that. Like, what's that all about? Or, I noticed that, man, when you're walking through Walmart, that uh, you're cleaning the bathroom up and, and leaving it better than you found it. Like you're throwing trash away. Oh, what, what was it? You, you actually pulled over and you, you met with the homeless guy. You took him to get some food. And I, what, what, just help me understand this. And do, are you with me? It's different. He's called us to be what? Say it with me. Different. He's called us to stand out. Let our light shine so that God may be glorified. I think of a friend of mine, and I'm gonna close here, but I, I was so encouraged recently. I wanna give you a practical example, because some of you are thinking like, preacher man, I get it, you're really excited about this, but like, what does this look like? And I'm thinking about a friend of mine who I, who I recently had a conversation with, and, and this friend of mine is just, man, he is raising up warriors all over the place. He, uh, he has a lot of influence in the business world and he was invited on a podcast for this guy who's, who's got this massive sales coaching kind of community and he's just making a difference in that space at a massive level. And so he invited my friend on this podcast and so they got some time to hang out before the podcast and then he recorded the podcast. And then after the podcast, this guy who's kind of built this whole persona and brand around like cussing and being the tough guy, right? And he's, yeah, you know, and, and great. It's, you know, he's got this great brand and God loves him and all that stuff. But he, he looks at my friend and he's like, man, like you're different. Like you're not cussing, like help me understand, like tell me about that. So this guy shares his testimony, radical transformation. I'm talking about he was addicted to pills. He was addicted to porn. He was trying to find fulfillment and satisfaction in everything but God. And he had a radical conversion, gives his life to Christ. This is a guy that played in the NFL and had a lot of awesome stuff going for him. And so you can imagine he's standing with some authority, with some confidence, knowing who he is as a son of God. And so he's sharing this testimony with this guy and the dude begins to cry. He's like, man, in two days, there's all these people flying into town and they're coming in for this training. Will you share that same story with them? My friend's like, well, I've got like six kids at home. Let me call my wife and see if I can stay a couple extra days. So, so she does and, and yeah, yeah, stay, share. So he gets up in, in front of this room, 200 business folks, whatever, and shares this testimony. At the end, he says, if any of you would wanna give your lives to Christ, what I want you to do is take your phone out right now and turn the light on on your phone and just start putting your phone in the air. And he sent me the video and one by one, the entire room, there wasn't one seat in this place without their light turned on. How did this happen? He was willing to stand out. He was willing to be different. He was willing to demonstrate. So I think we've got a question we've got to ask ourselves today. And here's the question, and this is the last question you've got to ask yourself, is who are you gonna invite? Who are you gonna to invite today? I know even right now, I just wanna pause and I want you to think about who's the name that God is writing on your heart right now? They're at your workplace. They're in your neighborhood. You're going on vacation with them soon. You were just at an event with them. Who's the name that God is writing on your heart? I want you to think about that right now. Because if it's not you and I, then who's it gonna be? And if it's not now, then when? I believe right now is the time. Right now is the time to step out. Who are you and I gonna invite? I love what Romans 10 says. It says that for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? 
That is why the scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of the messengers who bring good news. I love being a part of a church that isn't just surrendered, surrounded, spirit-led, self-fed, but that is sent. I think about all the stories that I'm hearing of you guys going into the community and inviting people to follow Jesus. All the stories of you going into the community, inviting people to come with you to church. Come on church, this is why we exist. This is why you and I exist. I want you to stand to your feet as we close here and I wanna finish with this story because I think it's powerful. Because some of you are thinking like, man, this is, I feel inspired, I wanna make a difference. I wanna share a story, a really practical story of someone in our church. They're gonna throw up the pictures here on the screen and you're gonna see Aaron. Aaron made a decision, an outward proclamation of an inward transformation. He made a decision to be baptized. Now his story is really special. He was a former athlete. One night he was driving home late, got in a car wreck and ended up becoming paralyzed. Now, really tragic story, but even in the midst of the difficult things that happen in our life, God can begin using those things to write an even greater story. So he ends up, he ends up at this facility called QLI. And I love what God is doing at this facility. There's a handful of people that work there that are coming to this church. And one of them happens to be named Ashley. Ashley's in the photo right here. She's the gal that's smiling in the background. Now what's so cool about this story is long before Aaron made the decision to be baptized, he showed up to church for the very first time. You might be asking, how did he show up? Well, Ashley uh, was serving him as a nurse at the QLI Center. She noticed that Aaron was man, struggling with a little bit of frustration, having a little bit of a bad day. And so she looked at Aaron, she said, hey, this Sunday, I'd love to just bring you with me to church. Can I, can I bring you with me to church? And at the time, he didn't wanna hear it. But you know what happens when we plant seeds? Those people gotta go to sleep with those seeds planted inside of them. That night he went to bed and he just couldn't stop thinking about it. When Ashley showed up the next day, he said, you know what, I wanna come with you on Sunday. So what did Ashley do? Ashley didn't set up transportation for him to get there. She went and she picked him up and she brought him to Love Church, and he walks in uh, here for the first time, comes in on his first weekend, and when they're walking out of church, he looks at Ashley and he says, I wanna go back with you. There was something special in that place. And Jesus was drawing him, the Spirit was working on him and drawing him back week after week, and she would bring him here to church and then they would go to Starbucks and get his favorite drink and she would bless him and just continue to invite him, and then he gives his life to Jesus and says, I wanna be baptized, and doesn't make any excuses, and Pastor Jim was with me to testify to this. It took us about 15 minutes to get him over into the right chair so that he could go down underwater. Can we put our hands together for this man? Come on. It all started with a, 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 it all started with an invite for you and me. So the question is, church, where's God taking you? What are you doing in that place this week? And who are you inviting? As a matter of fact, who needs to be sitting in the seat next to you next week as a result of you living on mission? Would we be a church that gets out of these seats, get it, gets into these streets and makes a difference? Can we do that? Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this challenge. We thank you for the great commission. We thank you that we were your plan A, that you passed the baton to us and you said greater things that you would do than I did. Thank you that we don't do it in our own strength. We're not doing it to earn your love. We're not doing it to earn your favor, but we're doing it because we love you. We're doing it because we wanna bring you glory. We're doing it for the benefit of others. We are willing to lay our life down so that you would be lifted high in other people's lives. God, would you give us the words this week? Would you cause us to go in power, in authority that was given to us by the power of the Holy Spirit? God, we thank you for this word today. We thank you that it's not gonna return void. And I pray that we would be an activated church, that we would be a church that lives on mission, that we would be a church where the kingdom comes in Omaha, Nebraska and beyond. We're believing you for it, we're trusting you for it, and we declare that this will be a house that lives life on mission wherever we go, in Jesus' name. Now before we go, 
I want to recognize this, this, this important principle that there's some of you in the room today because you were invited by a friend. As a matter of fact, you can resonate with Aaron or you can resonate with me in 2007 in a Hollywood video parking lot when I received an invitation to follow Jesus. And we close every encounter with an invitation. So whether you're joining us online or you're in person today, we're gonna give you an opportunity to say yes to Jesus right now. What you need to know right now is that you are not here on accident, but you are here on, by design. This is the divine moment in your life where Jesus is reaching his hand out and he's saying, hey, you, son, daughter, come follow me. Come, in, come walk in relationship with me. The beautiful thing is this, is that God had a plan for your life. And it wasn't one of separation, it was, it was oneness. He wanted oneness and wholeness for you. The problem is, is sin entered the world and we've all sinned against this holy God and that sin separates us. But God, God loved you and I so much that he sent his son to pay the penalty for that sin so that we could be restored back into right relationship with a God that knows us, with a God that created us. All we have to do is receive the free gift by faith. So if you're in the room today, it's not church attendance that makes you right with God. It's not reading your Bible that makes you right with God. It's not the money that you give or the good deeds that you do or the fact that you mowed your neighbor's lawn this week. It's literally simply acknowledging your sinful condition before a holy God and receiving the free gift of salvation by faith and saying, today I'm gonna surrender and receive it and walk in it. That's what you have access to today. And today is the day for some of you in the room. So if I'm speaking to you, if 